Microphone check, one, two, one, two. Welcome to another fantastic edition of The Pull Up. I'm your host, Joe Budden, here with none other than the amazing Meg The Stallion. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. I'm, I'm well. I'm glad, glad you could join us today. I'm glad that you have me here. This is, uh, it's been, you have been, uh, you have been a lot of firsts for me. Okay. You are my first new act interview. Okay. Because I typically hate the new acts. Well, let's set the record that he loved me, obviously. I do not, <laughs> I do not hate you. And that's kind of where the conundrum came. Because I reached out to you to do an interview before your record drop, before your mm -hmm. single drop. And I remember you saying, my single's about to drop. So I'm running crazy. Mm -hmm. And we didn't do the interview. And then the single dropped. And then you started running crazy. And I was proud. I said, oh, shit. It's working. Yeah. There she going out there. <laughs> speak to speak to me about how fast it's been because that's only that was only that was a couple months ago that me and you spoke. Um and so, now you So the 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 whole mixtape was about to drop. Uh, and I was just working on like recording and getting all that together. Uh Big Old Freak was like already out and going and I was just everywhere. So I was just like like, I just, everybody's like, oh my God, you're going so fast, everything really turning up for you in like just such a quick amount of time. And I'm like, I feel like I've been doing this forever. So, like, I've at, been secretly at this, rapping. At this capacity, though, at this frequency, at this rate. See, and that's why it's interesting talking to the new acts because you've had your whole life mm -hmm. to do this, and you have been. But it's a different game now, I guess. So you're saying it's not overwhelming because this is what I do. This is what I was born to do. It's really what I wanted to do. And I've been, you know, working on my craft for a long time. And just to see everybody being so receptive of it and liking it so much, I'm just like, oh, my God, that's crazy. Who me? I like me. <laughs> uh, another first for me with you, and I didn't realize this until maybe two days ago, is I discovered you off of clips. Mm-hmm. And that's not normally how I find my music. It's not how I search for music. It's not how I receive music. But I kept seeing clips from you where you was killing. Mm -hmm. I guess that's some new age shit. That's a today thing where acts like yeah. you can be received that way through social media. Was that a plan? I guess is what I'm saying. Um, or did that just? It was so natural. Like Got it started it. like um, my freshman year of college. I had just. You went to college. Yeah, I'm in college right now. Really? Yeah. What college? I go to CSU, Texas Southern University. How can you do that? I go online. Ah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's a new thing. It. I just started going online. But um, so yeah, I had went to like a kickback randomly, and I was like freestyling, and then my homegirl didn't know I could rap, and she's like, "Oh my god, we gotta put that on YouTube." So like the next day, boom, it's on YouTube. Everybody on campus know me, the stallion. That's the girl that rap. So it just. <laughs> but how did you start rapping? Um, my mom was a rapper. So I just used to watch her do her thing all the time. And I used to like steal her instrumentals and like write over them. And then I would just like practice, 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 practice. I didn't even tell her I could rap until I was like 19. Mm, why? I just wanted to be perfect before I like before put it out there. It. Yeah. How, well, how did she receive it when she found she out? She was just like, oh my God, no, you're not coming out till you're 21. Because I was already talking reckless. Is that how you started? As did a, you start with this content? Yes. <laughs> like when I was growing up, my, my favorite rapper is Pimp C. And then Biggie and like Lil Kim. So like Rest in peace to right. MC, Big. And Big, yeah. So just and like Three Six Mafia, I'm listening to all that as a child. So I'm like, oh my God, this would sound so cool if a girl was saying it. So Yeah, because you and Juicy J together, I ain't gonna lie. Juicy's good for that, but when you put him with a girl that's talking that shit too. Yeah. Like when I met him, I was just like, oh my God, I gotta turn up. Like, I gotta. I got to be on my game. I got to be on my shit. So when he met me, I had already knocked out like three, four songs before he walked in the studio. Mm. He was like, damn. And I was like, yeah, nigga, I love you. <laughs> I imagine it wouldn't be difficult for you to, to get features or reach out to people. I, I imagine it'd be easier for you than me. Well. Yeah. And let me know. Juicy came through. Juicy shows up. He's such yeah. a good dude. He's such a good dude. Actually, didn't y'all, y'all, you said had a beef about that record, right? About the Simon Says record? Look, yeah. look at your face. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. 
And like, so you gotta know, I don't never let nobody write nothing for me. Like, I always write all my own stuff. So I come in the studio and he got a, he just play me a record. And um, he's like, yeah, I think this would be dope if you got on this and you could restate the hook, da da da. And I'm like, ooh, I don't know, it's juicy, cause I don't never let nobody write nothing for me, but it's Juicy J. So I'm like, this shit hard, let's do it. I didn't know nobody else. I still don't believe nobody else had nothing to do with the record. Juicy just said he wrote the shit, he wrote the shit, and that's just that. So, yeah, so I'm like, okay, fuck it, cool. Then I just, we don't even got to get no more light to that bullshit. We don't. But, yeah. We don't. I only bring it up, I only bring it up, I guess, to get your stance on reference tracks today. And then people don't know what a reference track is, and it's really, yeah. it's really ignorant. That's like, where the confusion comes. Yeah, because, okay, so you got people on the internet, right, and they think they know everything. So, and then you got people that really don't know shit that, that make other people that don't know shit think they know what they're talking about. So, like, people are like, yeah, yeah, it's a reference track. Give her a credit. So, I'm like, okay, boom. So, y'all want somebody to get some credit for saying something. That just don't make sense. So, like, a reference track is him telling her what to say. So, I guess whoever he's going to get a song to going to know how I should go. Yes. Right. So, why the fuck? It, it, none of it just made sense. So, like, I hope people... Got their facts right on what a reference track is now, cause, and you know they was looking real silly to me. Uh, yeah. But we don't entertain silly shit though. That is, that is true. Well, I do sometimes when I'm bored, but <laughs> I gotta I gotta get out of that. Okay, so y'all cleared that up. Juicy came to Juicy came to defense. I thought that was amazing. Yeah. Has, can you sp speak to me about maybe some of the some of the hurdles that you have to go through, not just as a new act, because that's that's extremely difficult on its own, but as a female new act like recently i've seen maybe last month i saw a wave of like man hate yes it's have so you crazy. noticed have you noticed like a line of man hate it's really blowing my mind like every time i see just a whole grown man like with just so much to say on the internet i'm like dude like you really need to calm down somebody need to get this man a hug i don't know because are we we are we your audience like, it's a lot of women. It's, it's a lot of women. I yeah, feel like it's 50-50. I fuck with the men. Shit. I love the I, men. That's the album I heard. <laughs> <laughs> the album I heard was a lot of... I mean, it's, it's that not... That nigga pay. He, he is. He's, but yeah. why? Because, well, like, men are just supposed to be that. Like... Oh, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, okay. We love the guys. <laughs> so casually. <laughs> we love the guys. Okay, whatever. But, like, women need to feel, you know, empowered. We need to feel in charge. We need to feel confident and beautiful and strong. So, like, when I'm making my music, like, I'm making shit that's making me feel good. So, you know, I'm which just is, happy. Which is degrading and demoralizing men. Talking man. my shit and making sure these dudes know what's up with me. Get on your knees, nigga, mm -hmm. and pay. Make me feel good. But I like that. I'm yeah. talking. I'm talking shit. <laughs> but I like that. And see, the flip side of the man hate is to appreciate some of the great women that have come before you. You have to be able to appreciate their ability to do what they do with sex appeal. Mm -hmm. uh, I.e., Foxy Brown, uh, Little Kim. Shit. I, I was young and thought Queen Latifah was the most beautiful woman she in the world. Beautiful. So when I see somebody like you, I don't, I don't hate it. I look at it like you're pulling from, from your predecessors. Mm -hmm. is, is, that, is that a conscious thing? Um, definitely no. But I have, you know, studied, you know, everybody I thought was great. So it's just me having my natural sex appeal with like me listening to such the aggressive rap that I was listening to, mm -hmm. the raunchy rap I was listening to anyway. Like, I just feel like this is what I want to talk about. Like, this is how I want to, I act like this anyway, so I might as well talk my shit. And niggas are hating on shit like twerking. Like, how the hell did twerking become like offensive? Like, I did not know guys did not like twerking. I learned something new every day about Men and humans. I think they don't know what they want half the time. Like I don't really think I don't really think guys know what direction they're going in today. Like on Friday, they with the ass shaking. But like on Monday, they don't want that. Yeah, like, you just read me my entire life. Yeah. And I understand that's, that. That's why, uh, on, that's why on, I gotta on tell Monday? you what you're gonna do, and that's why I gotta tell you what you want. Cause you confused anyway. Mm, I see what you did there. Mm -hmm. I see what you did. And you know. And that's what I came away from with your little Trey Songs exchange. Because typically, we will see Trey Songs say, yo, I'm going to knock your head off. And then the chick is going to get her head knocked off. 
We don't really see the chick say, nah, no, you're not. No, you ain't. No, you're not. I'm going to handle that one. Mm. And I said, oh, <laughs> oh, my shit. She's a spicy new one, isn't oh, she yeah. now? First of all, you're not about to call me out publicly. Like, if you really want to fuck with me, like, you wouldn't have did that like that. Like, that ain't how that would have went. But he cool, though. Like, we of talked course, after of that. Course. Yeah. Super cool. Yeah, Super he cool. real cool. But yeah, I wasn't finna fly with that. Nigga, I'm making the style, and you not about to be publicly talking about you about to knock my head off. Boy, you wanna get your head knocked off? But is that it? See, and that's where you're so interesting to me because you're just so with the demoralization of <laughs> men. Because <laughs> you see how they come. Because, but niggas is, but why is I'm gonna knock your head off an insult? Oh, no, it what? wasn't an insult. But why did it give you the need to say, no, you can't handle mag. me. It's yeah. mag, my guy. Yeah, because that's just how I am. Like, guys, have they have that confidence. I'm not knocking him for having that confidence. That's very attractive. But I also have that, too. So just know you're not about to come over here and rock my world. Like, like, I'm, like I ain't that. Can you date in the same field? Uh, I don't know. Like, I haven't so far. But I don't know. It got to be like, like, you know, if you had a regular, like, you know, nine to five job. Well, that's the flip side of that question. Can you date outside of this field while being in this field? I think so. I think that's probably like the safest thing to do. Like you get oh, you somebody that's doing the opposite of you. So y'all never really run into problems with each other. They're going to learn you. You go ahead and deal with the mailman if you want. <laughs> yeah, He's going to have a trick for your ass. I mean, maybe he won't be the mailman. But I think if he had like a cool job, you know what I'm saying? Like he ain't really... I don't know. He ain't got to worry about what I'm doing. Like, <laughs> yo, <laughs> I ain't worried about you at your job. <laughs> you are rough. You are, you are rough to men. Uh, see, but on the exterior, you're rough. But we see these stories and they don't get too much attention. But this story broke recently about uh, the gentleman who was at the club. Uh, he saw you and when he left, he was, brute, uh, he was murdered. Mm -hmm. And you had an exchange and then you sent some money that way. That stuff... You catch that stuff and you say, it ain't just what she's talking about in her music. You catch the way that you handled the interview where we don't need to talk about it, but how you handled that and you say, nah, it's a little more than this it, than just what we're hearing. Speak to that. And are we ever going to get any of that in the music? Or are you just going to demoralize us <laughs> men and tell us to eat pussy oh. and pay for things? Y'all gonna do that anyway. Y'all gonna do that in every song. <laughs> but uh, demoralized woman or eat pussy and pay for things? Eat pussy and pay for things. Got it. Uh, but definitely when I'm ready to sit down and like make an album, I feel like I'll be able to, you know, open up a little bit more. Like right now, this me having fun, talking my shit. Mixtapes are like, we're dating. You know what I'm saying? Like that album, that's a that's a marriage. That's a whole relationship. See, but I mean? didn't know, and I, I don't I didn't know, and forgive my ignorance. I didn't know what was a mixtape and what was an album. I'm aware of your first mixtape from years ago. But I'm talking about now. Like, it's still a mixtape. Fever's a mixtape? Mm-hmm. Tell me why. Because it's, it's not on, me. It's, it's all original music. All original music. It's on iTunes. It's for sale. Mm -hmm. And it has backing. How is it a mixtape? I'm calling it a mixtape because it's not my official, serious body of work that's, that I want to call an album. I feel like it's just still me, you know, fun. getting dating. to know We're everybody. Dating. We're dating. You We're know what dating. I'm saying? We're just being very casual. So that's what my mixtapes are to me, me being casual. And you, and it sounds like you have a different approach that you want to take when it comes to albums. Right. When right? it comes to my album, I definitely want to, like, tell a story. I definitely want people to get into my personality a little bit more. See, you're not going to 50 cent me. You're not, I'm not going to let you trick me like he did when he came out and everybody thought that he didn't have no sense. And then he just made all the greatest decisions and business deals and made all the money in the universe. <laughs> and I feel like that's what your music kind of does. So when I'm listening to it and saying, oh, she's trying to get us out of all this shit. But then when I speak to you, yeah. you have such, such broader plans. Than yeah, it's, that. A, it's a lot you, going you, on you're, in here. You're fooling us. <laughs> I feel like you would have to actually talk to me to know <clears throat> what I have going on, though, and what I'm thinking about. To understand, like... For you to still be in school, even if it's through online, for you to do the assisted living stuff, to even have that compassion. I'm saying that as somebody who watched my 
dad take care of my uncle who passed, uh, take care of my grandfather who passed. I watched my mom do the same thing to her mom. Mm -hmm. So I understand that, and I know how difficult it is mm -hmm. when you're looking for somebody to even be there for assistance. So mm -hmm. for you to understand that, speak to me about financial literacy as a new act. Because you seem to have a pretty good understanding of just a lot of stuff that a lot of new acts struggle with coming in. So just, you know, being a woman who I wasn't poor or anything like that, but I also, you know, wasn't rich. So just coming from, you know, watching my mom and my grandma work so hard, it, it just it definitely put it in my mind. OK, save, 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 because you just never know what you're going to need Rainy in the day. future. You know what I'm saying? So as soon as I start getting money. I started like putting that into my tuition because mm -hmm. I knew that I didn't want that financial aid. I didn't want them loans coming back on me or anything mm -hmm. like that. So I just started like stacking my money and like paying for my school. Like I'm, I'm an out of pocket, you know, uh, student like that. Got it. So I definitely always put my money up to do that. Like I haven't even bought myself anything crazy. Like I bought me a place to stay and I'm always on the road. So I'm not really spending money on a lot of stuff. And I imagine that you're going to be on the road for like, quite some time now. How yeah. how is how is how is road life? Um we always hear tour and think of how exciting it is. Uh but as artists, the eating schedule change. It changes. Oh my God. The sleeping schedule yeah. changes. The germs from talking to different fans. Uh just being healthy out on the road, being away from your family. You can definitely gain home. weight on the road. <laughs> oh yeah, getting fat. Oh yeah, you're a woman, so you gotta manage that type what? of stuff. What? Oh my god! Like, why you can't just get fat on these niggas? Well, cause the you gotta. Ain't nothing wrong with being. Is fat. Kevin like, telling you to worry about your image? <laughs> Kevin is not hard on me at all. Like, but it's me on myself. I like to work out anyways. I've always been on like on the dance team and stuff like that. So I'm all, I, I'm all, I've always been active. So um, definitely gaining weight is. I, I have gained weight. I have gained weight. I was scared about it, and I was like, okay, look, Megan, you're getting pretty thick. Uh, what, what can we do? But I see, like, my hotties and stuff, they're like, oh, my God, girl. You got to work through it. That's just all I do. I'm just like, look, y'all, I'm gaining weight, but look how fat my ass getting. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I still try to do my crunch. That is not all we care about as men. It's not about y'all. It's about me and what I like. Fuck, <laughs> Fuck these niggas. That's right. <laughs> Um, what up? I had a question. You made me laugh, so I fucking forgot. Women, here we go. That's what I was on. And I'm going to try to be respectful here uh, because, you know, I tell my friends, I think you have surpassed a few of these bitches. Okay. And they shall remain nameless. Uh, but then I watch you, and it looks like you move that way, too. It looks like you move like you know you got your foot on bitches' necks. Mm-hmm. Um, but I still like the dominance of women in hip hop. I mm -hmm. like the reemergence of it. I like all of the new women. Speak to me about your role in that. Maybe some of the women that uh, you support, uh, and just where you stand in all of that. What what you would do if a bitch sent a bar your way? Like, <laughs> just give it to me. Well, so naturally. I don't have a problem with anybody. Of course. And I don't think anybody. New, we all say that is new act. I don't think nobody have a problem with me that I know about. Today, yes. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, if you want me you to know You sell enough that, records. If you want me to know that you have a problem with me, you will really have to blatantly be like Megan Thee Stallion, da 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 dissing me. Because I, I just don't even be paying attention to negativity, so I would never know who don't like me at all. That is the same thing that Drake said to me in 2009. So I'm going to say to you, like I said to him, in the event that you sell the records that me and your label and everyone thinks you will sell, they coming. If they come, like, let's just keep it in the booth, you know? Hey. I'm with you. Hey. 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 <laughs> let's keep, we got a fucking rapper on our hands. I like to rap, so come on, that's, that's what you do. It wouldn't be rap if it wasn't some type of rap beef. So, you know, I ain't tripping. That's, but That's attractive. All the new girls that I'm cool with, like, I'll try to keep us you know, all together. Like, I just, we coming up right now. You know what I'm saying? So, like, come on, girl. Come meet me. Come come hang out. Like, I'm having a party. Come through. Let's all get to know each other. Let's be cool. Because uh, when when people, when the fans see that the girls are being nice to each other, that, make them, that, that makes them uh, lessen that drama. Because mm -hmm. a lot of beef between women get started because of their fan bases, 100%. I feel like. So, you got to just make sure everybody cool, like, on every end. Like, so your fans won't get to, like, you know, making little messy stuff about everybody. So, I just try to make sure, look. 
I, you good? We good? All right. So, you know. And it's genuine, though. I, everybody that I've met so far, like, I actually, we, we be on FaceTime. Like, I got their number. Like, everything real cool. No, you, like, really kick it with people. Yeah. Like, my homegirls? Yeah. No, I mean, like, what? I'm talking about, like, new people that... I'm talking about the rappers, yeah. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. You got, like, a, like a good soul. <laughs> like, I want people to feel good. Like, and it's, it's anybody that does anything. Like, if you meet me, I want you to know, like, I really rock with you, like... Am I jaded that way that you say all these great things about you and all I can hear is how much you've gone through in life to bring you to be that way? Mm, I don't know. Because people don't just lot. send money to... The dude that was murdered when they just saw him in the club without really understanding what that's about and really empathizing and feeling, feeling that. That's not something that can be taught. Yeah. And the, the more we just kick it, you just say a bunch of that shit that's like that. I know Kevin is not teaching that stuff in there. So. I felt like it was the right thing to do. Like, uh, it, it, just, it just felt like the right thing to do to me. Um, just even the fact that his cousin was like, hey, I hope Megan is down. You see this? You know, he loved her so much. And I'm like, dang, I know y'all gonna have to pay for something. Like, what can I do? What you need? I didn't even know how much, you know, anything cost. Mm. I was just like, hey, look, here it go. I know. So, I saw. I saw. so then she put up uh, her. And you said, let me know if you need some more. I was like, shit, she's yeah, serious. Yeah, because she put up the GoFundMe and I was like, oh, damn, like, this is what y'all need. I was like, if y'all don't make it to y'all goal, like, just let me know because I, I got y'all. I cover it. So whatever. I just felt like that. I just felt, I felt bad. Like, I felt like, dang, like, to lose a family member, I know what that feel like. So. If you need something, like let me know. I saw you hanging out with a good Virgo friend of mine, um, good friend Wale. <laughs> yes, Big Wallace. <laughs> big Wallace. Yes, I call him Wallace. No, but the Big Wallace. Mm -hmm. See, all right. I don't ever want to think about Wale being Big Wallace. Oh, yeah, Big Wallace. Why are we calling him Big Wallace? Because he ratchet. Like, I thought Wale was going to be like a poet, calm, hippie kind of guy. No, he fun. Like, he's... <laughs> like, when I first came to the studio, they was like, yeah, Wale want to do a song with you. I'm like, he want to do a song with me? Megan? He was like... They was like, yeah, Wale. I was like, Wale, Wale. Like, Lotus Flower. Like, that... Wale, Wale? Yes. And I'm like, all right, cool, man. Here we go. Wale so, is great at, at featuring women on songs. He is amazing at it. He is a, just an amazing man in general. It's like, I come, in a, I come in the studio, and he's just so like energetic and I was not ready. I was not expecting it. I'm just like, what? And he's like playing me songs and then he played the one that we have together, pole dance. And I'm like, duh, this is obviously the song that I need to be on while they. So um, shoot, like ever since then, we just been tight. Like I came shot the video, uh, we shot it in Atlanta and we were literally just like, like this. We like talk on the phone like every day. He's so funny. Well, good. I'm glad you guys had a blast. You and Big Wallace. Yes, Big Wallace. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give him a call and, yes. and see what that's about. <laughs> <laughs> your 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 new album, and I'm certain you're not thinking about. Well, yeah, we're not there yet. But speak to me about your expectations of your music up until you release your next your next project. Like, what what are your expectations? What are the label's expectations? What do you think the fans' expectations are? I think my label just let me do whatever I want to do. So I don't even think they have. Like oh, anything man. set in stone of Time what they, <laughs> <laughs> they just let me be Megan. So um, they know I'm going to come with the heat. So they don't be tripping. They be asking me, well, what do you want to do today? And I'm like, you know what? Let's go do this. And it, it's, it always hits. So um, for me for myself, I always try to outdo myself. Like I'm my own competition, I feel like. So mm. I definitely just, I'm like, okay, what can we do to go harder than the last time? What can we do to add more shock value than the last time? Are you trying to compete, compete? Yeah, with... I got a lot of alter egos going on up here, so we competing with oh, our wait. Stuff. Slow down. You have introduced some new information. Mm -hmm. I, have you been diagnosed? <laughs> no, it's not like a crazy thing. Like, it's normal. It's not a schizophrenic, no. bipolar. No, we all good. We just good. a creative thing. Yeah, a creative thing. Uh, like, I know. So, oh, I got a bunch of those. I know what that is. So, yeah. So, my last, um, my last girl was Tina Snow. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, the pimp, you know, slap you with the backhand. So now Smacking we got... Smacking men, I'm assuming. You know, anybody. Which is promoting uh, abuse. I'm not promoting abuse. In a very sensitive uh, time. Well, hmm. Well, I'm not even going to talk about that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so my new girl, Hot Girl Meg. Okay. Yes, that is like my persona that I'm going with right now for the summer. Uh, she's really oh, so turned up. 
three month thing. You know, really turns up. She's really fun. You know, she just likes to twerk on everything. I thought Tina was fun too, though. Tina is like, I say she's like more of like the the pimp. Like she's more laid back. She's like very strong. You know. So maybe this fun Meg will be more welcoming to us men. Maybe. No, this is fever. This is like high girl Meg with this project. Th that's the welcoming to men, Meg. That's the fun fun Meg. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so um, I don't know who I want to introduce next with my with my next music, but it's definitely going to be somebody different. And I don't know. I don't really want to give away too much because I'm still figuring out what we're going to do with her. Have any of the have any of the fashion brands attempted to reach out? Have any brands attempted to reach out? Period. That are away from music because it seems like your star your star is getting brighter daily. I would assume they have. Yeah. Definitely a lot of people uh, reach out and, you know, ask for collabs and everything. So it's, you're going to see a lot of that in maybe like the next few months, like everything that you work on. You know, when you, you could work on, have worked on something like a year ago and then it come out finally and it's like so new to everybody else and you're like, oh, I already did that. So yeah, a lot of new things coming out. I have two questions that don't really have much to do with music. Okay. How do you get over a breakup? <laughs> I think good music and definitely a lot of time with your people, like with, whether it be your family with or your friends. new bitches? You mean like from a man's standpoint? Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, no, definitely not. Oh, no, well, give me from yours. Okay. Well, so anybody, I feel like it can relate both ways. So you definitely got to listen to a lot of good music because I feel like music, you know, just puts that, those good vibes in your spirit. You know mm. what I'm saying? Uh, that is true. Yeah, so then I feel like you got to just be surrounded by good people so they can give you good energy because your energy probably a little throwed off. Like you're so used to sharing your energy with somebody else and now that whole chunk of you is gone and now your energy kind of confused on what's happening. Like, <laughs> So you're walking around frazzled all day. So now you just got to go, boom. Hopefully you got good people around you and boom, like now you have a good How many times system. have you experienced that? Like a serious breakup that I was upset about maybe twice. Once in high school and once in college. And how old are you? I'm 24. Twice. Okay. Not too bad. I can't be dealing with all that emotional distress. Like, so. Why? If it's nine of you in your mind, you, think, you don't think that's stressful us, for a dude? Well, no. You got to no. deal with Tina and all this other shit? Yeah, he got to be able to put up with all that. So, I mean, I just can't. No, I got too much stuff to do. Now you didn't fuck me up. Now I'm sad. I can't even write right. Like, no. I'm not doing it. Writer's block. Yeah, I feel like uh, sometimes if something is upsetting me, I definitely will have like writer's block. And I cannot let a relationship block me from doing what I got to do. A man, right? Well, yeah, my job. You going to stop me from working? Oh, no. That's true. Man. That's yeah. true. You got to get to the paper now. I, I got to because you ain't going to give it to me. That's true. Yeah. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I heard the music. You know? I'm keeping mine. Uh, and your spare time. Like. And away away time, from the music. What What, what is happening? Uh, like, definitely school. Uh, but I like to work out a lot, and I like to, like, paint. Um, and See, that's why I need the people to know your music is a lie. What? You like beautiful shit. You like to paint. <laughs> <laughs> I, do, <laughs> I do like to paint. I like to do stuff that makes me feel good. A nigga could take you to the museum, and y'all look at some I love some the art. museum. See what yeah. I, I don't hear that on Fever. I ain't, I'm hearing No, something. I freaking love the museum. Like, um, in Houston, we have, like, the Museum of, like, Natural Science and everything like that. I'm always in there. Uh, I like y'all got turkey leg. You say you need to go get a turkey leg? Yeah, and y'all got turkey leg. Oh, cut. we do have turkey leg. Cut. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. That shit is really big. But it's great. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I like I like to do I like to do little cool shit. Like a little weird shit, you know. I like to write books. Like my when I was little, my mom, uh I, I probably told my mom I was bored once ever in my life because the one time I told her I was bored, she went and was like, You need to go write a book or something. So I was like, shit, okay, well, write a book. Like I could do that. So I like went and wrote and illustrated a whole like little book and I've like been doing stuff like that like ever since. Like uh I like anime. So I've always been like drawing like little comics and stuff like that. So that's just me in my spare time. Get out of here. Yeah. You have a, like a lot of interesting little Snapple facts. Yeah. <laughs> about, about you. But but that's awesome. And I imagine that is uh, part of the reason why you have been received with such open arms from not only media, the, the fans, your peers. Uh, listen, even as we speak, uh, Kevin Lowndes is here in support of you and Ooh. and listen no listen that's important it when 
when shit like that happens, it's just important to recognize it. So mm -hmm. I'm super happy that you're in this space. Uh, I want to continue to support you along your journey. I would love to be in bliss when you and Wale are in there acting stupid. Oh my God, I'm calling Big Wallace. You have to call Big Wallace. We can all get ratchet together. I'm calling Big. Well, I'm not ratchet. I think you ratchet. I'm so now. I'm telling you. Do you have like a I ratchet? Think it's there. Do you have like a ratchet meter where you can tell these things? Mm -hmm. And I could tell you get ratchet. But why? Why is that? Because like you calm right now, but the way you speak, like it's there. Underneath, buried. Under all this bullshit. And it ain't even like too buried. Like, I feel like you're trying to contain it, but it, it, it's there. I have to work to arrest that side of me day to day. It's a process. You ain't gonna tell me. See, see. <laughs> is, there anything, is there anything that I'm forgetting? I know you have, listen, you have a million things to do. Um, I don't wanna I feel like always We talked about a lot of good things. Uh, this was super cool because a lot of times interviews are like same questions, same thing. I hate it. I hate it. Yeah. I hate it. And we just, Chop it up. Well, like I was telling somebody before you got here, like I, I never normally do new acts because I hate them, but part of the great shit about it is you've had your whole life to live for, for me to talk to you about. Uh, so that part is awesome. It may not be much to talk about on your second album. What? I feel like more crazy shit will probably happen to me by then. Like, I feel like a lot of crazy shit has been happening to me. But I'm very discreet about a lot of things that I see and that I, that that happened to me. So, you I know. think I think some more crazy shit is coming. I think more crazy shit is coming. And next time we talk, there's no telling who you'll be talking to. All right, I'm done. I'm done with you, <laughs> Meg, Tina, the other seven of you up there. Thank you for your time. Thank you for having us. No. <laughs> <laughs>